cut off um, because I went over my time on that last video. So here's part two of that. Um, as I was saying, most of you skeptics are skeptic because you don't know what you're talking about. If you knew what you were talking about, you would try to explain what is the truth instead of just merely being skeptical. Let me say that again. If you knew what you were talking about, you would clearly present the truth instead of just being skeptical. One of the things that really kicked me with atheists is um, that atheists think they're so different, and, they, and, they, and, and, and they're not. Pilate did the same thing to Jesus. You know, when Jesus says, I'm here about the truth, I came... To preach the truth. And, and Pilate said what is truth? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're letting these people put me on a cross. And you don't even know what truth is. Okay. And when I talk to atheists. I say what is the truth. And they tell me everything but what I just asked. Stop. What is the truth? If you are going to tell me. That. I don't. That, 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 I'm, that I'm a fallacy. As they, a, as they, as they put it. Or that. You know, um, it's all about indoctrination. Okay, then tell me what the true doctrine is then. There's a doctrine to everything, brother. What is the true doctrine then? If it's not what I believe, what is it? It's not just believing in nothing. And science is not a spiritual matter. When we talk about faith, we're talking about spiritual matters. So, so... Let's get off of, you know, mutation for a minute, okay, and get off of, 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 of what evolved into something else for a second, and let's get into spiritual stuff, okay, we can argue all night, or I can just sit here and shut up and listen to you when you go to talking about certain so-called higher forms of science that I don't know nothing about. That's fine. I'll admit I don't know nothing about it. I'll just sit and listen to you. But when you talk about God, you better have something to replace it with. You can't replace it with an empty box. Because did nothing create itself? Okay? Um. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying about my brother Bible Flockbox again, I like Mr. Bible Flockbox. I really do. I like him. And um, he means well. We all mean well, but we have to protect the foundation. And the way you protect the foundation is by humbling yourself and becoming truthful. And I will agree with the atheists on this. Um, yes, Denom a denomination, some denomination, as I said in the last video, some denomination, it took a denomination, excuse me, some denomination from somewhere, somebody, to come and tell you about Jesus. Like I said, everybody got to go to high school and elementary school. We all got to go. You're going to go to school somewhere. There's elementary schools in the ghetto. There's high schools in the ghetto. There's colleges in the ghetto. Okay? Well, in some ghettos, okay? So, um, you know, there's people graduating schools and they're still thugs. There's people graduating schools and they're, and, 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 and they're in jail, like, you know, two years later. You know, it has nothing to do with your spiritual placement in your life. It has nothing to do with who you are as a, a spiritual being when you graduate with a PhD or you, or you, you know, you're at the top of your class, you know what I mean? And you're the best at science. You, you, you make straight A's in science in, in high school and college. But then you, you go out there in the real world and what do you do? The first thing you do is you smoke. Well, doesn't science say that the Surgeon General said you shouldn't smoke? Okay. You name it. I mean, there's just so many things that, 
enough of me. Hold on a second. Oh, my battery's starting to die. Let me plug this in. That's not it. Come on. Where you at here? Get in there. Oh, I'm going the wrong way, that's why. Oh, come on. There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, we need to learn the Bible for ourselves. And um, that is my whole point of these videos. Um, this, this video right here. We need to understand the Bible for ourselves. We all mean well. We all mean well. But we have to protect the foundation. And the way you protect the foundation is by understanding. And when you think you understood, you don't stop reading and studying. You keep on studying. You know, Mr. Bible Flockbox was off when he went to talking about tongues. You cannot talk about a subject like tongues without a complete scripture treasury because you don't want to lead people the wrong way. Tongues is very important. When you get to the subject of the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the things that makes the Pentecostal church look so good is that the Baptists don't speak in tongues. Seven-day Adventists don't speak in tongues. Presbyterians don't speak in tongues. So even though the Pentecostal church might have some other issues that, are, that need to be dealt with, and maybe they go overboard with tongues, but somebody's got to speak in tongues because it is biblical. The apostles spoke in tongues. Jesus prophesied to them that they would speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is very much a part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit all through the New Testament. For somebody to go up against tongues and say that that's kind of pagan, I think you're kind of pagan. And again, I'm not saying this because I'm Pentecostal. But thank God for the Pentecostal church that I understand the scriptures to speak on tongues. What's dumb about the Pentecostal church, though, is that a lot of times they so busy studying tongues, they ain't studying other things. Okay? You know what I'm saying? You don't need special manifestations of the Spirit to preach the gospel. I've had people grow up in a Pentecostal church that are backsliders right now as I speak because they were so turned on by the gifts of the Spirit, especially tongues to be exact and the gifts of miracles, that that's all they cared about when they came to the Pentecostal church. They couldn't wait to get their hands on them gifts. And when they got their hands on them gifts, it's like, oh, they get up there and preach. They got to see people fall down. They got to see people speaking in tongues. They want to make you speak in tongues, you know. But it, but just to, just to preach the word, pray over everybody and make sure they get it in their head and that, okay, and close the service, that's not good enough for them. They have to see miracles happening. They have to, you know, and, and, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, hey, y'all can fool around all you want to. I'm leaving out of here. Church is over at 10. Y'all can stay here and, 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 and have a little extra service if you want. I'm leaving at 10. And the Pentecostal I church, Pentecostal I church, the Pentecostal church that I go to right now is really different. You know, um, it's a mixed church. And I got to admit, black folks get carried away in the Pentecostal church. They never start on time and they never close on time. You know what I'm saying? They they start late and then they then they stay extra late because oh you know they they want you to believe that the Holy Spirit moves that way. The Holy Spirit holds us up every single night that we ha that we come together as black people. The Holy Spirit holds us up. I don't believe that. That's one of the things about the Pentecostal Church that I don't uh, that I don't stress as I put in the last video. I do not stress that and that's why I go to a Pentecostal church that is mixed because you know um, mixed Pentecostal churches even though we believe some things that one of the things that we believe is that um, the uh, Pentecostal church um 
the tongues are the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit in my denomination, and my pastor knows that I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't necessarily see it that way, but he doesn't condemn me because he knows that as long as I'm a Christian, I don't need to believe that because that's not that's not the basis of my faith for whether or not I believe the tongues are the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit. I believe tongues are prevalent for today. Paul clearly said it. How could Mr. Bible flock box? Miss it. It's right there, plain and simple. Chapters 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. It's plain and clear. But, you know, he tries, you know, he, 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 you know, when you say that, when you say the way he said it, just like a lot of Baptists will say that same thing, you have to quote the whole book. I remember when I was in a Bible study. And I was supporting it, even though it was ran by a Baptist minister who, he only knows the Bible through the Baptist ministry. And I know him that if he, if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't, if, if it's not Baptist what he's teaching, then he'll, 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 he'll act like he doesn't know. Just like when we got on the subject of tongues, he 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 fumbled the ball when he went to reading First Corinthians, because he was trying to act like it was like he was taking Paul to court. Okay, and he caught himself. And he says, "Well, anyway, let me get off of that." Yeah, brother, you need to get off of that. Okay, I don't even know why you brought it up because you're Baptist. Tongues ain't your thing, so why bring it up? You're Baptist. We everybody knows you don't speak in tongues. Okay, I don't speak in tongues either, but I am Pentecostal. But God is not judging me, neither am I going to let anybody in the Pentecostal church judge me because I don't speak in tongues. Because my Bible doesn't tell me I have to speak in tongues. It says, and some, he gave the gift of tongues. doesn't say everybody. It doesn't matter. Now, some Pentecostals, they believe that you got to have prayer language. Where's that at in the Bible? But he did say, that these signs will follow those that believe. Okay? And when he was when he said these signs shall follow those believe, follow those that believe, he was talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And he told them clearly to go in the upper room and wait for the moving of the Holy Spirit. And they followed him and they did it. Now, a lot of Baptists, you know, like this brother. He, he read the account of the book of Acts, and then he said that, oh, well, this pastor here, he says, well, uh, tongues was not um, talked about that much in uh, the rest of the Bible. Then he went to 1 Corinthians, and he fumbled the ball, because chapters 12, 13, and 14, he realized. I just looked at him and smiled, and smiled, you know. I just looked at him and smiled, because I knew he was hanging himself. Okay, know your Bible for yourself, not a, not your denomination. There are certain things about my denomination I won't preach. I don't preach my denomination when I preach God's word. I preach the Bible. I don't preach my denomination. And I don't believe Mr. Bible Flockbox needs to preach his denomination. His attitude towards tongues is about his denomination, not about the Bible, because the Bible clearly says... That unless Paul was a was unless Paul was pagan, Mr. Bible Flock Box, okay, then tongues are part are one of the gifts of the Spirit. Not for everybody, but they are supposed to be just as much a part of the Spirit as miracles, as healing, as the gift to teach, the gift to prophesy, the gift of intercessory prayer, the gifts of helps, and all the other gifts. Okay? Tongues are one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I've seen Baptist people leave the Baptist church because they started speaking in tongues. That God, because they understood the scriptures and God blessed them to speak in tongues, so they had to cut themselves off from the Baptist church. Same day with Seven Day Adventists. Even Catholic, even though that's a cult. Okay, but they had a good heart and they only wanted to follow the Bible. They didn't follow the Catholic Church. While they was in the Catholic Church, they followed the Bible. Then they realized that, hey, that's another reason why I don't understand why even a lot of Christians, 
like justify the Catholic Church because they got you know friends and family to go to the Catholic Church. That's fine, but like this brother did, if you really, really, really are 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 honestly following Jesus and not you know uh, the ritualistic Catholic Church, you'll break off from them and 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 be your own person, man. Be your own person. Again, Jesus didn't come to. Jesus didn't come to. I'm gonna have to get off of here because my batteries, um, my batteries going low in this, uh, in this, um, and my time is short and my phone's getting hot. So, anyway, again, um, thanks for watching. Um, again, know your Bible for yourself. Not according to denomination, not according to religion. Jesus came to not only set us free from our sin, but he came to set us free from religion as well. And that includes denomination. Know the Bible for yourself. Paul explains all this, just like he explained where tongues fit in to the modern day church. He also explained where following Christ fits into the modern day church. That's why all religion must bow to the truth, just as well as religion. All denomination and religion must bow to the truth. I'm not claiming that I'm the truth, but I'm not bound to things that are not the truth. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. I'm not bound to things that were added or subtracted from the, from the Bible, from the truth. Okay? I'm a free, born-again Christian. I'm not a part of a religion. I'm not part of a denomination. And if you are a Christian, you're free from all that if you're truly a Christian. Okay? That's why some denominations and some religious people, I don't understand how you call yourself a Christian when you are bound to your religion or bound to your Christian and or bound to your denomination. Mr. Bible Flockbach clearly said when they asked him, what religion are you? Shouldn't be no religion. But when they asked him, what religion are you? He said, I'm a seven-day Adventist. Seven-day Adventist ain't supposed to be a religion. It's supposed to be a denomination. And a denomination does not is not the word of God. A denomination is something that you stress because you found it in the word of God. My problem is when you go to stress and stuff, as I use that word, usually it's really not clearly part of the word of God. It's added or subtracted. Okay? Just like some denominations don't even... Believe in being born again. When you don't believe in being born again, that's like step one. You don't believe in being born again, you don't went from being a denomination to a cult. That's the you have to believe in being born again. That's what Jesus is all about. If you ain't if you don't believe in being born again, then you just you need to go back to whatever religion you're from, and when you're ready to really bow to the truth, then come back. Okay. Um but because I got cut off, I decided to finish with this. And so God bless you. Thank you for watching. And um, again, I just want to um, correct people because there's good people in the Pentecostal church that ain't trying to be religious. They just, they just love what the Pentecostal church has done for them. Just like Mr. Bible Flock Box. You know, thank God for the seven-day Adventist church for what they did to him. But when it comes to the word of God, Know the Bible for yourself, not according to your denomination or your religion. And then you won't have to worry about going to war with anybody else's denomination or religion. There you go. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.